algebra 1, this is 1.7. We're going to talk about functions. So right away, I just went to a function. What is a function? Well, a function, guys, is just like we talked about before. It's a relationship. It's got x's, it's got y's, or it's got inputs, and it's got outputs. And so the more exact point of this is, is that it's more than just a relationship. It's where there is exactly one output for every input. Now, what does this mean? Well, I think it's easiest to show in a mapping. So if I have a mapping where we have inputs, we have outputs, and I have two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? So we got inputs of two, three, and four, and we have outputs of five, six, and seven. What it means is that there's exactly one output for every input. That means that two only goes to a five or only goes to one number. Three goes to one number and seven goes to one number. This is a function. It means that every time I put a two in, it's going to go to a five. If I put a 3 in, it will go to a 6. If I put a 4 in, I go to a 7. Here's the thing. I can put in 2 a thousand times, but that 2 will always lead me to a 5. Now, how do I say if, things are, if it's a function or not? Okay, We're all going to go take a trip. We're all going down to the soda machine of your choice. You put your money in for the soda machine. You say you wanted a uh, Pepsi. So you push the Pepsi button, a Mountain Dew comes rolling out. Is that machine functioning correctly? No. no. It's not functioning because the button says that it should be going to a Pepsi. Now, wait a minute. The person behind you goes, I want a Mountain Dew. I'll just do that. So they put their money in, and they, put, or, and they go and push that Pepsi button, and all of a sudden a Pepsi rolls out. It's not functioning right if it's going, the same button goes to two different kinds of soda, right? Now, obviously, in high traffic areas, you go up to a machine and there'd be like three Pepsi or three Mountain Dew buttons on a machine, right? That's okay, because each one of those inputs is the same input that goes to the same output. So when I push a Mountain Dew button or a Pepsi button, it brings me to that soda. Then it's a functioning machine, it's a function. But if you hit a button that says it should go one place and it gives you something else, it's not functioning correctly, we're upset. And so, let's show one that's not a function. So, we go back to our mappings. We got our in, we got our outs, just to make it a little quicker. Let's do two, four, six, and we'll do a seven, two, and negative one. Well, add one more here. No. Back that up. We'll take this out. We'll take 7 out. This is not a function. If I put a 2 in, 2 goes to 2, that's fine. 4 can go to 2, that's fine. 6 can go to negative 1. This, guys, actually is still a function. Because every time I put a 2 in, I go to a 2. Every time I put a 4 in, I'll go to a 4. Every time I put a 6 in, I'll go to a negative 1. That's perfectly fine. But as soon as I do this, I'm going to change the colors so we can highlight this effect. That if I go like this and make the 6 also go to a 2, that's not a function. Now. This is not a function. It's not a function because now I'll choose 6 to go in. Sometimes it'll be a 2, sometimes it'll be a negative 1. It's okay for multiple inputs to go to the same output. As in the 2, the 4, and the 6, they're allowed to go to 2. But a single input cannot branch out, as we have for 6 here, can't make branches to more than one output. If it does that, it's not a function. And the thing about this is, I'm using um, mappings. They may use a table instead. And so sometimes they make their tables horizontally. But 
I have a two, I have a four, and I have a six going in, so I don't need all of these. And as we can see, right now a two will go to a two, a four will go to a two, a six will go to a two, oh, and a six also goes to a negative one. This is not a function still, but it's in a table form. Looking at the table, how can I really quickly say, hey, that's not a function? Look at my inputs. Okay, first of all, all I have to do is look for, does their inputs ever repeat? And also you're like, uh, yeah, there's a 6 here and a 6 here. Then check, do they go to the same number? No, therefore it's not a function. Because every time you put a number in, it needs to go to the same number. This is not a function. So again, not a function. It's the same information. Here. Hey, wait a minute. What if we gave you a graph? What if we gave you a graph and gave you this? How can I tell if that is a function? Or how can I tell if this graph is a function? How can I tell if either one of those are function? One of them is, one of them is not. I'm going to say, let's use the vertical line test. And that vertical line test says that if any vertical line can be drawn on the graph and intercepts the graph no more than once, then it is a function. So therefore, if it intercepts more than once, it's not a function. So what do I mean by that? I go to my graph and start writing vertical lines. Remember, vertical lines are straight up and down. Each one of those red vertical lines touches the, the, the purple graph there, the line, how many times? One here, one there, one there, and one there. Since it only touches once, therefore it is a function. So this one is a function. Because this x input only goes to that y output. That's what a graph is. Coming over here, let's draw some vertical lines. Hey, look at this one back here. If I draw one back there, does it even touch the graph? So therefore, it must be a function, right? No more than once. What about this one here? How many times is that one touching? Exactly once. Must be a function, right? Oh, well, keep going, because it can be anywhere, everywhere. Boom. Boom. How many times is it touching the graph now? Two times. It's touching one up here and one for the below down here. Therefore, not a function. So that's the vertical line test. Guys, if you're given a graph, you use vertical line test. If you're given a table, look for the x values to see if they go to the same outputs. If you're given a mapping, look for an arrow from an input going to only one output. The last thing I want to talk about is function notation. Function notation, guys, normally we've always been seeing things like this. y equals 3x plus 8, right? Well, now function notation takes the y away and puts an f of x in front. That's called f of x. f of x, I'm going to write it over here, y is equal to f of x. Now, f of x is not the only way they say it. They may use a g instead, so it would be g of x, or h of x, or n of x. It could be whatever it is. It's a basically saying that this equation right here is a function made up of x's, because the x's are variable. So I technically could say f of n but then I would have to have 3n plus 8 because the variable is an n. Okay? f of x, g of x, f of n, they mean the same thing. They're just the y value, the output. Now, we're not going to stop there. We're going to actually evaluate these. So, let's go back to the problem here of 3x plus 8. What we're going to do is we're going to evaluate that function at 1. What is f of 
1. What it means, guys, is that I would normally see an x in our equation. Now, I want the, a function made up of 1s. That means wherever I saw an x, I now need to place a 1. So that equals 3 times 1 plus 8. And what's 3 times 1? 3 plus 8? 11. We're evaluating functions now. So how do I write this? I officially write this as f of 1 is equal to 11. Stop. Do not think that the number that's inside this parentheses needs to be divided out. It does not need to be subtracted out. People keep going here. You need to stop here. This is why you have to stop, because it's saying the function evaluated at 1 is equal to 11. OK? So let's try this again. What's f of negative 2? What would that look like? It would look like 3 times, parentheses, negative 2 plus 8. And what is 3 times negative 2? Negative 6 plus 8, which equals 2. So the answer, officially, would be f of negative 2 is equal to 2. Done. It doesn't matter what I have inside this set of parentheses. It goes for the variable that is in the problem. Hence, I can do this. What is f of Justin? What is it? Three times Justin, yeah. It doesn't matter plus eight. Now, obviously, we don't know what Justin is in this particular problem, so you would have to leave it that way. But it's the same exact thing. It doesn't matter what's there. It goes into it so you can evaluate. Any questions?